So in an interview with MSNBC, Standing Rock Sioux leader David Archambault too spoke out about Donald Trump's recent executive order that revives the construction of the Dakota Access Pipeline and also expedites the construction of it. So he talked about why this is really harmful to their tribe and their sovereignty and their drinking water. And I wanted to hear him out. I wanted people to hear what he had to say because when it comes to the rights of historically oppressed groups, the federal government has made it clear that they don't care what they have to say and they don't want to listen. And Donald Trump did not listen to what the Standing Rock Sioux tribe had to say. But as progressives, we listen. So I wanted to talk about this because I want David Archibald's message to be heard. Here's what he had to say. Well, we were prepared, prepared for um, President Trump to take a run at everything that we had accomplished over the past two years. We had uh, asked for an environmental impact statement because we had concerns. And, and the, the troubling thing is that uh, this, this president is um, circumventing federal law. We don't. We have treaty rights. We have water rights uh, with our winter winter's doctrine. We have NEPA, and uh, the Environmental Protection Agency was put in place for a reason. It was because corporate world was contaminating water. The corporate world was contaminating our air. Corporate world was contaminating our lands. So for this president to come in and say we're going to streamline everything and forget the Environmental Protection Agency, forget uh, all the federal agencies that are are making sure that the things that are important to this world uh, are protected. Uh, he's coming in just trying to streamline everything for, for money and greed. And, and there's a, a huge conflict of interest with this. You know, he uh, received a lot of money, $100,000 from uh, the, the executive of Energy Transport, for, um, Energy ETPD, Energy Transport Partners, uh, for his campaign. He also has investments in Phillips 66, where these, where this crude oil is going to be shipped and get refined. So he's going to benefit. And, and a lot of the lawmakers get contributions from the industry. So the federal laws are in place to, to try to facilitate the fossil fuel development in keeping in mind that uh, these laws are being created by people who receive money. So this is not about protecting people or, or complying with law. It's about money and greed, mm -hmm. and and this president, this nation, better start bracing itself for what's to come. If if we're starting to witness in the first four days, him using an executive order to circumvent federal law, it, it's it's not right, and it's um something that we better get ready for. I was disappointed that it came this soon because we had worked so hard for the last two years, and the president didn't even reach out to try to hear our side or understand the concerns. Uh, there are local issues that are taking place and we've been working with the, the state government to try to address these issues. Now this uh, just stifles all the work that we've been trying to get accomplished in the last few months. Um, I know that you've uh, had continuous talks with the congressional delegation looking for some assistance from members of Congress. The delegation all support the pipeline here, um, not to paint this as a battle that is over, but your legal and political remedies at this point, uh, what do you see as your next best chance? You know, we're going to continue to look at the validity of this action, and we're going to continue to uh, talk to anyone that would be willing to listen to us in the administration to try to understand why there is resistance. And we're going to continue to to try to get support from Congress who are not fed by the industry and and really open the, the America's eyes on what's happening here. Um, this is this is scary times, especially if EPA is um, given a gag order and not to comment on anything. Uh, not to put anything out on, on media, not to uh, discuss this issue. Uh, this is this is a, a scary time for America, and this is not about making America great. It's making America bad again, and it's about abusing American Indians again. So what he said there really resonated with me. He expected Trump to do this, but he didn't expect him to do it within the first week. He knew that Donald Trump would, in fact, revive the construction of the Dakota Access Pipeline because of this conflict of interest that not too many people are talking about. I mean, if the, if the media was doing their job, they would educate the people day in and day out that Donald Trump signed this executive order, presumably, we have no idea of knowing, because he stands to profit personally from the Dakota Access Pipeline because he has stock in energy transfer partners and because executives from energy transfer partners 
contributed thousands of dollars to his campaign. So this is an act of corruption. And I'm glad that David Archambault spoke out about this because this is a part of the story that really needs to be emphasized. What Trump did here is an act of corruption. And the fact that he acted so quickly to revive the construction of this pipeline really speaks to why this conflict of interest needs to be addressed. Democrats should already be pursuing impeachment against him because of this. Now also, uh, David Archibald said, we have treaty rights, we have water rights, and the corporate world is contaminating our water. And Donald Trump is streamlining everything for money and greed. And when he talks about, you know, we have rights, we have treaty rights, Donald Trump didn't hear them out. He makes this statement. He says Donald Trump didn't even think to talk with them. I mean, knowing that this is a divisive issue, Donald Trump, you know, rather than speaking to the leader of Standing Rock or speaking to uh, people at Standing Rock Reservation, uh, he decided to just expedite the construction of this pipeline to push it through before public resistance becomes too overwhelming to where they can't do it. Why wouldn't you try to at least talk to them? So that way you give us the appearance that you're reasonable. Trump's not reasonable. Trump is is an authoritarian. He wants to do things his way because he wants to make a lot of money from the construction of this pipeline. And then towards the end there, David really emphasized something that I was feeling as well. He says, this is scary for America. This action, just within the first week of Trump's presidency, sends us some, the message that Donald Trump is not going to take into consideration anyone else's point of view. He is going to govern in a way that will facilitate very large profits for oil and gas companies. Uh, and at a time when we desperately need to get off of our fossil fuel dependence, at a time when we desperately need to be moving towards renewable energy, Donald Trump isn't thinking about that. He's thinking about the short-term profits. It's really sick. And this whole story is heartbreaking. So look, honestly, David, we're doing everything we can to help you out, buddy. We are on your side. So even if the federal government continues to turn a blind eye to Native American sovereignty and clean drinking water rights that every single American has and uh, the clean drinking water that every American should have access to, we're listening and we're going to do what we can to fight because this can't stand. Support this podcast by joining the independent progressive media revolution today at humanistreport.com.